Hi, my name's Steve Hoppy, and I have a stiff neck. And it's not like a old guy stiff neck, it's a spiritual stiff neck. And I want to tell you about a miracle that helped me to uh, get over that stiff neck and to uh, change my life. So a uh, little bit about me. I was raised by a uh, Catholic family and uh, we went to church every Sunday. And when I was younger, you know, I, that was all I knew. And, you know, I thought that was great, but uh, by the time I got to be 11 or 12, you know, I just wasn't connecting with that. I never really uh, made a solid spiritual connection, or if I did, I decided that, you know, I wanted the things of the world more than I wanted a spiritual thing. And, you know, I, church, I just didn't have relationships there. I uh, wasn't uh, connecting with that, so went my own way. And, you know, the people that I associated with uh, were not church-going people. And so, you know, we were living for the day, for the party, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll was the credo of the day, and that's what we did. And uh, that went on for a long time. It, uh, you know, I went through high school, you know, my parents went to church with them because they insisted, but I was not, you know, involved in it at all. And by the time I left the house and, uh, you know, well, I left the house at 16 and, uh, never went to church except when I went to visit my parents, you know, I'd go with them just to please them. But otherwise I was doing my own thing. And, uh, you know, through college and uh, after college, you know, wasn't interested in church, wasn't interested in God, spirituality, whatever. It's just about uh, me. And, you know, had a bunch of relationships, but then I met my lovely wife, Jenny. And uh, when we met, she wasn't going to church either. So, uh, you know, we were just having a good time together and we did get married in the church, but that was like the last time we went to church for probably four or five years, I guess. But uh, we moved from uh, Alexandria, Virginia down to North Carolina and uh, Jenny was into horses. And, uh, she met some nice people that rode horses and they were into church and they were asking us all the time, hey, you gotta come to church, you gotta come to church. And we did, uh, we went to church with them and they were good people. And, but I was going to church to socialize uh, and, uh, you know, not, you know, I was hearing some scripture, but, you know, not really getting into it all that much. But, uh, and then they wanted us to go to Sunday school. And it's like, oh my gosh, another hour out of my day. <laughs> and there goes football. So, uh, wasn't, uh, you know, I, I still mailing in for that whole experience. Uh, but I met these two guys, uh, D Bryan and, uh, Jim McConnell, and they had a class that they're doing called through the Bible and they were going to read through the entire Bible and they were going to give commentary and they were going to study it. So, uh, you know, Jenny and I got into that and, it was uh, it was going along, but I was like the devil's advocate in the class. So I was, uh, you know, one who uh, would question everything, and I would try to trip them up, and you know, I would make the comments, you know, and all this other stuff while in class. And I was trying not to be too bad, but you know, I couldn't help myself because I was stiff neck. And anyway, so then one day, and I can't remember the date, and I don't know the preacher's name this really bothers me but there's this they had a revival service and this is uh where you know change took place and that's uh went to this revival and this young guy was just really on fire talking about stuff and and i found myself instead of you know rolling my eyes and doing other things that i used to do i was agreeing with him and you know it was, it was affecting me and it was i felt you know convicted 
And uh, at the end, they had an altar call. And I didn't go up to the altar because I'm a stiff-necked person. <laughs> but I did kneel down there at my chair on the gym floor and uh, clover. And, uh, you know, I said a, a prayer. And, uh, you know, they had co did a prayer. And then I was praying and uh, prayer salvation. And, you know, I felt comfort and peace from that. And you know, I said, I'm in and I'm ready to go. You know, it's okay, this you know, check, you know, because that's the way you do it in the Catholic Church. Is <laughs> you, when you're done, you're done. And But I could not stand up from there. I tried to stand up, and I thought, you know, what is wrong? And so, you know, I just said, okay, well, I'll say another prayer. And, you know, I went back to my Catholic roots, and, you know, probably say the, uh, the Lord's Prayer, you know, because it's one I know by rote. <laughs> So I, you know, check that off. Amen. Still can't stand up. And I thought, you know, I didn't have cramp or anything. You know, I, my legs are all good. So I sat there for a while and I didn't hear a voice and I didn't hear, see a vision or anything, but it was peace. I was, and I didn't feel like I was by myself. Uh, I don't know if Jenny had gone off to be a social butterfly. But she, <laughs> you know, that's a, uh, she uh, connects like that. But uh, anyway, I just seen that. And then I had, for the first time, I actually had a conversation with God. So I asked him, can I please stand up? And I didn't hear any audible thing back. And But I was, uh, you know, I, I felt not alone. I felt not scared or anything but you know i felt that there was i was in his presence i felt the presence of god and that was uh, a miracle to me i i felt different than i had before uh, you know i didn't feel like i was rejecting him or he was rejecting me uh, part of my problem with my upbringing was I always felt that the the Old Testament and the New Testament were a total disconnect and uh, you know one was a rent, wrathful God and one was a uh, forgiving God but you know if you didn't pass through this you weren't getting to this and I didn't think I'd make it so I thought well, might as well you know enjoy yourself because you know I just wasn't going to make it so at this point I, I felt an acceptance and uh felt that peace and uh, then I sat there for a while kind of in silence. I didn't I didn't pray anymore or talk anymore after I had, I felt, you know, I didn't know what to say and I was waiting for a response and then I was able to just stand up and like nothing happened and then it was, uh, everything was good and I was really relieved about that too. I mean, because, you know, I didn't know what was going on. That was I had never experienced that before, uh, and I haven't had anything like that ever happen again. But uh, I do feel that, you know, I was changed by that experience, uh, that God was uh, there with me, and uh, he, uh, you know, he wanted to get me to that point, and there's a lot of good Christian people who uh, made that happen, and uh, that's uh, that's the miracle that happened to me is I was changed from somebody who was not a believer and did not feel the acceptance of Christ or you know really even believe honestly that God was there to do anything or that you know I questioned if there was a God and from that point on I think I I had faith that yes, there is God. And I felt that there was forgiveness, that there was, uh, you know, that he could forgive someone like me who had rejected him for so long and pushed him away and not been walking with him. And then I had a lot to catching up to do as far as learning about God and stuff. But uh, I did have a couple of things I wanted to read. I don't know, do we have time? Do that, but uh, 
uh, kind of uh, similar analogy. One's from the Old Testament in, uh, in Numbers. Uh, the Israelites were walking through the desert for 20 years, but they already knew God. And I had been exposed to God. I mean, I knew about Jesus when I was younger. And then I went walking in the wilderness for a long time. Actually, not as long as the Israelites, but a long enough time. And uh, God put a plague of snakes on them and uh, they started getting bitten and dying and they complained to Moses and he prayed for them and in Numbers 27 and it says, and Moses prayed for them and the Lord said to Moses, make a serpent and put it on a pole and everyone who is bitten may look at it and live. And Moses did as he was instructed and I guess that, that fixed that problem. And then the, the parallel, and one of the things that, you know, I always had a hard time with in religion at all was connecting the Old Testament and the New Testament in John, and it's in John 3.14, right before John 3.16, where uh, it says, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. And, you know, I think, uh, from my experience, God cured my stiff neck that I could look up to the cross and uh, accept his forgiveness. And it's made all the difference in my life.